This is home stretch. We're over three weeks out in the North Atlantic and we're finally nearing the Caribbean Sea. If you're new joining us here, we're Steph and Travis and we're on the final leg of our second transatlantic. A lot of crossing lasts are happening this episode. And this here is our very last piece of fresh produce. Our last fresh caught fish, last sail change, last crossing chit chat. You didn't talk too much about our buddy boat because and of course, it wouldn't be complete without one last thing breaking. But that's okay because we've got our spirits up higher than ever. I'm so excited, I can't count. <laughs> After last night's sail change in the middle of the night, we ended up flying throughout the night. We were doing like 6.7 to 7.7 .7 knots carried us all the way into this morning so that was really nice to catch up on some mileage and hopefully if we can keep up this speed we'll be there in three days right yeah hopefully <laughs> we got stable winds for the next two days two days from now we're almost there it looks like we're gonna lose the wind and it'll go really light so we're either gonna be in really light winds and still be able to sail, but like at three knots and it'll suck, or we'll just have to motor, but we'll see. Either way, it'll be a slow reach. <laughs> We're on day 23 now, so we are definitely ready to get there. And this here is our very last piece of fresh produce, our last apple, which we're gonna have some yogurt today. We do have some canned fruit. Like I used some canned apricots to make some crumble tarts yesterday and Canned fruit is not the same, so yeah. The sooner we get there, the better, because I need my fresh produce. Oh, never mind. Travis just reminded me that we still have one avocado in the fridge, which is really questionable, but I've been saving that for when we catch a tuna. Well, we've been waiting to catch a tuna so we can have some poke bowls, and I really love avocado with it, so we've been saving it, and I don't know if saving stuff is better than not when we're on passage because it just ends up going bad so it's like you don't want to eat it right away because then you don't have it so you save it until it's too far gone and you can't have it anyway so it's, yeah well we're eating that today yes <laughs> that looks pretty good perfect yeah apples definitely last the longest so next time we'll get way more apples Day 24, and it's a spicy one. 20 plus knots through most of the day. And uh, making good ground though. Doing six and a half to eight knots. And uh, we're looking forward to getting there. I think we got another, I don't know, maybe another 48 hours, maybe less. Then we can get this boat all cleaned up. Stop us from feeling so sticky. <laughs> sea state's pretty sizable. And it's just awesome to just sit there and watch. You get mesmerized by it. Obviously you can't feel the motion sitting on your couch, but if you could, it'd be uncomfortable. Day 25, land is yonder, about 80 miles, so that's cool, we're moving nicely. Yesterday, I was kind of wondering why we're not getting as good a solar as we were, and I came over and looked at our panels that I put down on the side here, not realizing that when we were flying the spinnaker the other day, the sheet, I run all the way aft and then goes forward, the sheet 
totally cleared off the connection ends on the solar panel. <laughs> so that's a super bummer. So these solar panels are no longer doing anything. Hopefully, there's a little there's a little bit of metal left on one of them. So maybe if I'm lucky, I can solder them somehow back to the panel. But if there's no metal exposed on the panel to solder back, then I don't think I'll be able to, to fix them. Which would suck, because these are brand new panels. Now we're lacking on power a little bit, but I'll show you what I'm looking at. So here's the end that was attached. As you can see, they were attached right here and here, and the sheet just came off and cleared it off. The reel just went off, and we think it's a Wahoo. Well, Travis saw a jump, and he thinks it's a Wahoo. No, he didn't. Set it. Are you sure it's not green? Look at him. He's to the left of us. Yeah, I saw it for a brief second, but I didn't touch the color. Funny because we were talking with our buddy boat, who's already made it to Martin. And he was like, oh, can you catch this with a mahi? Because he's been having such good luck catching them. And we're like, oh, yeah. Yesterday, we didn't throw out the rod because it was pretty um, big as well. But today, the last day, we're like, yep, we will uh, throw out the rod and see what we can bring back for you guys. But if this is a wahoo, I don't know if we're going to share that. Or a tuna. If it's a mahi, we'll oh, share the mahi. Oh. What? It's a mahi! No, but something else grabbed it. Oh, Travis, are you sure? 100%. It was long and slender. Not are you sure? 100%. So there was because, two. Like, it got no, off. because mahi swim together. No, it got off. But mahi normally swim together, right? So there's normally two. So are you sure? It wasn't just like a darker one? It was a totally different looking fish. You'll never know. That makes 10 <laughs> mahi we've caught. Yeah, I'll get the gas. Yeah, so we didn't talk too much about a buddy boat or our buddy boat because I don't know that we can consider them our buddy boat after day one only because they took off after the first, second day and just made so much ground on us as each day went on that we were quite far apart. But we did keep in contact every day. We sent emails twice a day just to check in on each other, let them know of conditions we were in and where our location was, all of that, which is really nice. So we are really excited to meet back up with them once we anchor down in Martinique. There are six people on that boat and two dogs. So it's a very, very full boat. Um, there's a couple, there's two little girls, and they have two girls as crew on there as well. So I know they're going to be very happy to see this fish that we're bringing back for them. And we're really excited to spend Christmas with them too, just to have somebody that we know are there that we can celebrate with. Because we're cutting it pretty close to Christmas now. I have been tempted to decorate our Christmas tree, pull it out, because I've taken a look at it a couple of times on this passage, but I know that, you know, decorating it and putting it somewhere only means that it's going to fall over and I'll have to stow it away. So we've kind of been just saving all of our Christmas festivities and celebrations until we get there, which means we'll really only have a few days before Christmas. Really excited nonetheless. Travis is just cleaning up this mahi. He's getting quite good at processing the fish and making really clean cuts and all of that. Mahi number 10, but we kept, this would be number six that we kept. We just didn't need that many. Like we were hoping for something different. So if we didn't catch the mahi, we would just release them back into the water if we weren't eating them, like if we had enough from our previous catch. Did you say you're getting quite good at this mahi playing and processing? I'd say I've had some practice now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tempted to try, but when we're on a moving boat, not so much. And he's just so good at it. He gets it done quickly and efficiently now. And it's really nice, so he doesn't waste any of the meat, which is which is good too. So we'll leave it up to him for now. All right, so we've got this bag of mahi ready for our friends. All packaged and ready to go. Travis is getting 
a little confident. He's just going to leave all their stuff out here. Yeah, you got to sharpen the knife every time. Get it nice and sharp and then just... Just leave it there. <laughs> we just need some proper pliers because I kind of just yank it out by hand, but it doesn't work. So right. he's ready for the tuna now to get on the line, right? Yeah, the tuna's that big. Just perfect size. Perfect just enough size. for me and you for maybe like... Maybe the head and tail that big, but the body that big. So we can have some good sashimi. 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 You could never say that word. No. Sashimi. Sashimi. You're like sashimi. Sashimi. Sha. But yeah, you clean that up real quick. I feel bad. You're like just about to have your lunch, but I have it heating up on the stove for you. So you can come eat before we catch that other fish. Oh, yeah. You better hurry. Better catch that tuna. <laughs> So what is lunch? Just some bacon carbonara gnocchi that was left over from his dinner last night. No land in sight yet, but we are 53 nautical miles out. And the winds are starting to lessen a little bit, so we are furling in, or we just furled in the headsail, and we're gonna put up the vinegar. Hopefully that's gonna be our last sail change until um, we get there. Seven knots, and over the waves we're doing eight three. We're gonna the, fly there. The winds weren't supposed to veer that way. The winds are veering more north. They're supposed to veer more east, and they're supposed to be more behind us. And all of a sudden, we put the spinnaker, and now they're in front of us. Oh, there's a tanker behind us too. Only at nine knots, but that all mattered. You know, seven two to eight three a minute ago. <laughs> Yeah, we're 70 degrees apart. So. Maybe we'll catch a tuna in this speed. We won't get it up, but we might be able to snag just, one. I just let the rod out pretty far, too. Oh, it's bigger just dipped in the water. Did it? Yeah. We tipped it. I was going to go out and get some shots at the instant for 60. Those miles are melting yeah. off. Yeah, it's a little lumpy though, and I'm pretty sure our spinnaker hates us. Uh, <laughs> but we're flying. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy. Like you, you know, I thought they were gonna be doing like three, three and a half, going. Oh. But luckily, we went a little bit further south, so we were able to put the wind in front of the beam, and now we're ripping. So originally, we thought that we were gonna get in around 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. local time, but instead, we're gonna get in probably. I don't know what what did I cut it? I think it was like didn't even think about it. I think it was, it was like well, it keeps changing. I've literally been on my phone mapping the distance every five minutes, like it's gonna change um, well, and calculating. Four hours from now, if yeah, we can we'll keep probably six and a half or seven knots. Yeah, if it, we're about thirty-five nautical miles away. If we go like seven, let's say, it'll be five five and a half hours or so, which means we'll get there at I don't know my phone. Wait, five hours eight. I'm so excited, I can't count. <laughs> she get there at like 9 p.m. local time. 
It'll still be dark. <laughs> I don't care. That's way no, that's better so than like 1 a.m., 3 a.m. That's shaving off a significant amount of hours. Well, yeah, it'll just be easier on us. So, we're, you know, not fatigued and tired and like. I'm too excited to be fatigued. This is normally my bedtime, but this is so. This is exciting. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> so crazy to be back in the Caribbean again. It, After a year and a half. After a year and a half, we're back here and <laughs> can enjoy the, that Caribbean lifestyle again. The simple life. That simple life and boat work. Oh, if you're wondering why the paddleboard is there, it's because we had it deflated because our spinnaker sheet was rubbing on the side. As you can see, there's some wear. So we had it deflated, but then we inflated it too soon because we obviously took the spinnaker out, so we just have it there for now. Your nose is all burnt, I same know. to your face. That's a Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer for Christmas. <laughs> We've slowed down. Home stretch and we've slowed down. No, we're going five. Yeah, it's I think more on the four and a half. We're so close, but look at those skies. Look at it. It's just still lighting up. It's super pretty. You, when I'm with you. Dead calm. We made it. We made it. Good job. Good job. We're so tired because there's a four hour time difference and it's actually like three, almost 3.30 in the morning for us. Yeah, it's hard to feel even what real time it is because we've changed so many time zones, but we're here, it's dark, it's calm. We're anchored in 14 feet of water and I'm it's so tired. Yeah, it's time to go to bed. But it's crazy. For the first time in like almost 600 hours, I can turn this, <laughs> the instruments, the autopilot off. Did you off. calculate it? 600? Yeah, it's about 600 hours. <laughs> just shy of, which is just crazy that that autopilot just stays on that long. Such a champ. Yep. Again, can't wait to see what it looks like in the morning and look at this clear blue water. We'll show you guys in the morning after we get some shut eye. Yeah. Time to go to bed. Good job. Can't believe we made it. Yeah, of course we made it. Why well, know? Of course we're, we're gonna make we're gonna it. We're gonna go. But, you know, it's just it's an accomplishment. It was it like is. twenty, just shy of what? Twenty four and a half days. Yeah, just shy of twenty five days. That's pretty Up crazy. Hiya. Now down below we go. Okay. Good night for now. Thank you for joining us on what's been a truly memorable milestone. It makes it just that much more special knowing you've been with us. We can't wait to show you what we get up to now that we're back in familiar territory. If you haven't watched the earlier parts of this series, we've linked a playlist for you below this video. We'll see you in the next one.